All right, welcome to a quick help video on uh, weak acid um, titration. Here is the burette measurements that were measured during a titration, and the starting volume was at 2.51. Doesn't mean we added 2.51, that's just where the burette reading was, and the pH was measured here. So ideally what we want to do here is get this thing back to actually being zero. So what we'll do here is we'll add a, a column in between here, and um, what you can do is just right click and then insert, so then once you have it there, the actual volume of hydroxide added here was actually zero. Now you can go ahead and put zero, and you can go through and kind of subtract if you want to. There's a way to make Excel work for you. And the way you do that is you can do an equal sign here. And then we want to take this number and then basically subtract it from itself. So in my case here, it's 2.51. That now makes it a zero. And actually, all of these, we want our starting amount subtracted from those to find the real amount we've added. So what I can do now is take this box here. If you bo grab the bottom right corner, if you drag it down, it'll fill down the exact same formula. So if I click on this last one here, you'll notice up here, it's still A27, so this number right here, and it is subtracting away to the 2.51. So these are the actual volumes of hydroxide that was added in the, in the lab there. Okay. So up next, I guess we want to graph this data here, so you can grab your data, like so. And uh, you're going to go to Insert tab, you're going to go to the scatter plot and the one with only markers. And when you do this, you get a nice looking graph like this. So a couple of things. We don't really need a legend on this one here, so we're going to get rid of the legend. And then um, we're going to make sure we add our titles. Now, if you have, I think on your graph, you actually have a little plus sign right here. That's where you can like click to add some different things. On mine, I can go to the top ribbon here and uh, affect the layout. So chart title. So this particular um, titration was a titration of an unknown acid. And then we can add uh, some axis titles here. So the horizontal axis title. Uh, let's see, where's that at? There we go, axis title. Horizontal or x-axis is the volume of NaOH added. And that was in milliliters. And then the y-axis title is going to be pH. So this is your graph. And you are eventually going to take this graph here and you're going to paste it onto a blank sheet of paper like so. And then just take that thing and kind of stretch it out a little bit so it takes up about half your page here. And eventually in your lab report, you're going to analyze this titration curve. Um, so let's take a look at your actual lab handout for a second. Okay, so if we slide on down here. Um, on the analysis page here, the, the last page, um, you're going to create a graph uh, using Excel. And I'm doing that right now, I'm making a flip video for you. And you're going to copy and paste this into the analysis section of your lab report. It's actually going to follow this page. This, is actually, this page we're looking at here, this is your analysis page where it starts here. I've already got it labeled for you. Uh, but you're going to create this graph here, you're going to paste in there. You're going to go through, you're going to label all these points on there. Now, we're going to cross off the end point because we didn't do it this year. So you don't have to do that one. But I want you to clearly label where the equivalence point is. So if you think the equivalence point, I'm just going to make something up here. Let's say you think this right here is the equivalence point, is this number right there. You would you know, darken like a really nice big circle there and then draw a line here and say this is the equivalence point. And then if you think this is the half equivalence point, you know, draw a little dot, dot and line it there. And you're going to go through and label all those things on your graph, same where they are. Okay. Uh, kind of back up a little bit here. Um, you should have already done this with a group member if you haven't done it yet. You need to um, basically be finding um, uh, the actual concentration of hydroxide in part one. So part one of our lab, you measure out KHP, you had an initial and final volume of hydroxide added to neutralize it, how much volume that took, and then you're going to calculate the actual concentration there. So do that. Then in part two, we had our titration curve like you saw there, and here's all your data, and here's the mass of your weak acid. And right here, you're actually trying to find the molecular weight of your unknown acid now. So to find the molecular weight of anything, you need to know mass, and you need to know moles. So you've already measured out your mass here, there's got to be a way to find the moles, and you should be able to figure that out. Then once you have those two things, just go ahead and divide them out, and that's your unknown mass.
Okay, I'm going to kind of splice something in your, into your uh, flip video quick. Um, I kind of forgot to mention this. Um, trying to find out where the actual um, equivalence point is on here. You know, you can kind of guesstimate it's somewhere right about here on this titration curve here. But the best way to find that is to actually take your, your pH data and analyze a little bit further. We want to find a spot where the, the changing of pH here is the most rapid. And the way we can find that is by finding the change in pH divided by the change in volume. So the way we're going to do this here, I'm going to go to my second pH into the box right next to it. And I'm going to do a, do a calculation. I'm just going to kind of put it together. So kind of watch here. Equal sign. I'm going to start a parenthesis, take this pH minus the pH before it to get a change in pH. But I'm also going to divide it by, open another parenthesis now, I'm going to divide it by the change in volume that took place there. So this volume minus the volume that goes with that right in front of it, and the parenthesis and hit enter. And what that's going to do is do this difference divided by that difference so it, to basically show us our rate of change in pH. And it's 0.0089999. Okay, so pretty low change there. Now take that and drag it down to the rest of your data here. And what you're going to see is it's actually increasing, 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 increasing. The pH is increasing. As you can look at your chart there, the pH just keeps on changing very, very rapidly like that. You're trying to find the biggest one, so 4, 6, 19, then it goes back down to 4, 5. That's pretty typical. Now my data's a little off here, and that's okay, we can actually analyze it further. You can actually see my biggest change is right here at 27.6. So between these two, which one's better, 19.5, 27.6? Well, don't forget, and I'll write it right here, don't forget that when you have a weak acid, HA, and it reacts with OH-, minus, the products are H2O, and A minus. So when these two completely neutralize each other, they're all gone. There's nothing left. What you have left behind now is water and its conjugate base. And a conjugate base should be a basic pH. So between these two, 19.5 was a pH of 5.7. It's actually right about here. The other one that had a big one is 27.6. pH is 8.29, so right about here. This is probably our better equivalence point because not only is it, it was the highest uh, changing of pH, but also it's in a basic pH range where that's what we should have when you reach the equivalence point. Um, basically, all you should have left is A minus. So that's a good way to figure out what your equivalence point is. So my equivalence point is at a pH of 8.29, and more importantly, uh, this is the volume it took of hydroxide to get there, 16.24 milliliters. That can be very helpful uh, in trying to figure out the, the moles of your acid later. All right. Um, once you're done doing your graph, there is a way to find K by using your graph. So by this time, you should actually know how to find Ks of unknown acids. So do that using your graphical data. And then uh, when you're done, you can use your calculated molar mass and Ka to determine your identity of your unknown acid. And in class, we passed out a little half sheet of paper that looked like this. And these are the acids you possibly could have been given here. Sodium bisulfate, potassium hydrogen phthalate, potassium hydrogen sulfate, and potassium bitartrate. Now, I didn't give you the molar mass of those things. You have to calculate those. So calculate the mass of sodium, hydrogen, sulfur, and three oxygens. Get the mass of all these things here. And compare your masses. Let me flip back over here. So you actually got your own mass of your acid right here. And here you found the Ka of your acid. Using your acid's uh, molar mass and Ka that you determined, compare them to these here and try to figure out which acid I gave you. I gave you one of them. Once you think you've determined what, what your acid is on number five here, come find me and um, I will tell you what the actual identity of your identity of your acid is, and what the accepted molar mass is, and what the Ka value is, and then um, you'll have to calculate the percent error of those two things when you're all done. Okay? That's kind of your analysis. When you're done with that, you'll write a, a discussion section of your lab report or conclusion or whatever. Don't forget these the concepts here are the major things you want to talk about. Standardization, why do we do it? Uh, what are weak acids? Equilibrium constant, Ka's, what are they? What do they tell us? Uh, what's an equivalence point? What's a half equivalence point? And just kind of talk about titration curve in general. Okay, so the overall objective of this was to um, accurately, um, I take it back, your overall uh, job was to identify your acid here. Also be able to do standardization, what that is, do a titration curve and analyze it. And um, analyze the following things about your titration curve. So that's kind of your overall goal of your lab. 
And lastly, the question section of your lab report is this. When you're all done with your lab report, you should have a question section. And your question section is this. I'm going to have to change this just slightly here. Uh, do one pH calculation for each of the four major areas on a titration curve using the volumes, using your volumes of hydroxide used. So as we've all seen, um, in all titration curves, there's a beginning spot where your volume is zero here. I'll actually write that in. Volume is zero. Um, there's an equivalent points volume, so an equivalence point volume. So wherever you find your equivalence point volume to be able to make something up like 15, um, that's your equivalence point. So using that volume, now calculate the pH based on that, and then pick anything between zero and 15 right here, and then pick anything after 15. And those are the three, the four major points of a titration curve. Uh, calculate your pH there and kind of compare it to your actual measurements and see how close they are. But uh, just a little practice with some titration curve calculations there. Okay. All right, so that does it. So lab report, get your calculations in a little bit early, and then uh, lab reports are due uh, the next week.